All right. Welcome to Drawing a Self-Portrait. We are going to be using several guides that are in our packet. And the very first one is I like to use this standard and I put it on the front so you could easily put your paper on top and trace the face shape and the neck. We also came in and did the midline to half your face. This line here, which is what they call the B line, is the line where your eyes are. This next line, which is basically halfway mark between the top of the head and the chin. Then you're gonna go halfway between the eye line and the chin for the nose. And halfway in between the end of the nose and the chin is your mouth line. So we'll be using that as our guide. And one of the first things I will start with are the eyes. Eyes are very important when you're drawing. They are the windows to the soul, as I would say. And you need to make sure that you have an eye width between the nose So, in other words, you're going to have from here to here, I'm going to put my finger here and mark that, and then I'm going to judge over here and mark that. You would actually have a whole nother line of measurement of an eye from here wrapping around the side of your head to your ear. But since we're drawing this straight facing head on, you're not going to have that. So, to start with, we're going to need to get the shapes of our eyes here. So, an eye is shaped like a football, but we always begin with creating more of a rainbow for the top part of your eye. And then I'm gonna curve this just down and do more of a smile to bring it up. And again over here, I'm gonna curve that down a little. We're trying to create uh, an elliptical. I feel my eyes are different sizes a little bit. I'm gonna double check myself, yep. So I'm gonna bring this one maybe out just a tad more. There we go. Okay, now we have our eyes. The next part we're gonna need to add is the iris, the color of the eye. And an eyelid would cover up parts of your iris, but you can see most of it. Then on the inside is the pupil, which is the black part of the eye, which allows the light to come to the retina so you can actually see. The darker the room, the larger the pupil, the lighter the room or area you're in, the smaller the pupil. Okay, so right through in here, I'm going to erase that a little bit because we're going to add some tear ducts. So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to make 
make almost like a little J to create the tear duct. I'm also going to, and while I'm here, darken around. Eyes there. Okay. So, as we are here, what we're going to do next, that we have this, is we need to add some eyelids. So your eyelid follows the curvature pretty much of your eye. We all have eyelids. That's what keeps us uh, being able to close our eyes when we need to sleep or protect them from something. And I'm going to use my finger to just create a little bit of shadow. That's where the eyelid kind of bunches up a little bit. In the crease there. Uh, when you are shading Right now, I'm just going to color the iris in lightly because I'd like to go back and put more details into my eyes later. Adding highlights. And maybe some more lines that you would see into a real eye. Okay. Now that we have this, I am going to add some eyelashes. If you are a guy, you do have eyelashes too, but I can understand you not wanting to add much in the way of eyelashes in your drawing. So just add a little bit and keep them very small. Don't bring them maybe even all the way over and make sure this part where the eyelashes would be is nice and dark because that'll help you also to have that illusion of eyelashes there guys okay So the next thing I'd like to do is put in some eyebrows. The eyebrows are going to be the length of your eye and they go up on the brow bone and they'll come up and go down. And I normally use, I do a line and then I start adding in individual hairs. When you do this, the hairs will grow going up as you go up the arch. As you hit the peak of the arch, they're going to start laying down. And as you go down, they start laying down, the hairs do. So up as they grow, as you're going up. And when you hit the peak, it's almost like gravity is pulling them over. Okay. 
Now, you can use your finger to smear it a little bit, and sometimes after you do that, you may want to clean it up just a little bit with your eraser. The next thing we're needing to add is going to be our nose. And noses can be done so many different ways. I have several right in here. One thing that's important for us to remember on a nose is the ending is here. And this is the part that comes up when um, in between, it's kind of like the part that's in the middle of your two nostrils that are open. And my nostrils would be colored in because it's going up. I think I would bring this down just a little bit more. Okay, and now up from here, these are just two outer parts of your nose. Okay, now the rest of this of your nose is not going to be hard lines. These are the only hard lines you do on a nose. You're going to be bringing in shadows. And again, you use your finger to help you blend or a blending tool if you have that. I'm going to do some erasing right down the bridge of the nose. Now this part... Might have a little bit more of a shadow to it. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shading over here. I'm going to be real light when I get about on there. And this should help start giving us that illusion of the nose. Barely touching that. Okay. Now that we have the nose, I'm going to go back right here. Put a very fine, fine line. 
for the bottom part of your eyelids. This is to help the nose and the eyes to work together. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, our next part is we're gonna do the mouth. There's so many different ways you can do mouths, just like you can draw anything different like this is another version of the nose. There's just so many different ways you can do this. The point is, is if you use something like this, you're going to be doing a lot of shading and a lot of erasing. And that's a pretty hard, not hard to draw, but a very strong, hard nose that's on someone's face. You have a page here for mouse. And then I like this one a lot because it gives you lots of different ones to choose from. So I'm going to take where the center line is and and that's where the line between my top and bottom lip would come together. Now, the next thing I want to do is where this midline is. I'm going to come up with a V. And depending on how full the lips are or thin they are, I'm going to bring this down to there. And this one down here. And don't worry, we're not going to leave that like that. Okay, so now this part, we're going to dip it down almost like a mini smile or something in there. And then that part will go away, that bottom part of the V. So the V was just a guide to kind of help us figure out where to put the cupid or bow, bow and cupid of your lips here. And I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit on the edges. To that line. And they'll come up and fall drop down a little bit that top line top lip there and that's just the upper lip that's a pretty full upper lip now we're going to do the bottom the bottom is almost like a smile it's going to come from here and get that fullness. So these are very full lips here. Now, as I start to do this, I'm gonna do some very light lines going up and down here. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. I'm gonna thin my lip down a little bit on the top. To me, that looks too full. Now this can come and be smaller. It doesn't have to be um, strong in here, because if you'll notice here, it shows you different ways to do this for different kinds of lips. So lips are different. And you'll notice in here, there's always a little shadow 
it goes in this area. This is your cute bow and cupid, I believe, these two areas. I believe that's what we call it. All right. Now, uh, for our person here, and boys, you would probably have more. To me, these look, this is more of a man slip right in here. One thing you might want to do is you can always put to represent the starting of that shadow from your bottom lip starts to extend down to your chin. Now, lightly when you're done with this part, you're going to want to erase these lines right here that we used as our guide on our face. Ah. Uh -huh. 